our first storyteller coming up is Jose Miranda. And Jose is from Venezuela and loves this land in Venezuela with every cell in his body. He grew up in the Venezuelan flatlands on a water buffalo ranch. And here in the valley, Jose is developing a water buffalo breed for dairy production. And I can't tell you how amazing water buffalo uh, milk is. And I'm sure you all know the um, mozzarella, the burrata from the buffalo. But I grew up on water buffalo milk um, because I was slightly lactose intolerant. And it is so creamy, he'll tell you more about it. <laughs> but it's just like yum. Um, just the mere thought of it, my mouth waters. Uh, at the moment, Jose is focused on finding landowners who want to lease their land to grow his herd while he is at both animal training, uh, organic farming, and strengthening the herd he has at the moment through genetic development and sustainable design. So let's put our hands together hugely and give a big welcome to This is the calling of the water buffalo, and the water buffaloes are my calling. I grew up in Venezuela in a bioregion called Los Llanos, uh, and it stands for uh, the flatlands. And it's an uh, area so rich in biodiversity, it's just patches of savannas and thick forests with all kinds of mammals from jaguars to ant eaters and deer, an amazing amount of uh, birds of all colors and bugs of all sizes. It's the kind of place that is so wild that it just absorbs you. It just makes you become a part of it. And this place is just really marked by the changes in season, from dry season where the dust just never settles down, to the rainy season where just everything floods and the mud in your boots you will never get off. You just grow a few inches in the rainy season from the mud. <laughs> So in the middle of all this region is where the cattle operations really developed in Venezuela since colonial times. But it was in the 70s when uh, my family introduced the first water buffaloes for commercial purposes to serve a, a dairy herd. <clears throat> so I grew up around these magnificent animals. And I grew up nourished by their milk. I grew up riding in their backs across the savannas and swimming in their backs in the middle of the floods. So I knew this is what I wanted to do with uh, my life, and for me to continue education in Venezuela was very difficult. So I was able to get a scholarship, and with the help of a scholarship, I went to Montana State University, where I graduated in Animal and Range Science. During this time, I met my wife, and we headed back to Venezuela, newly married, and to work at the family ranch. <clears throat> time came to have our kids, so, we relocated back to Carbondale, uh, where we have our two magnificent kids. Live here for about five years, but all the time I had that calling of the water buffaloes and that need to get back to Los Llanos. <clears throat> During that time, the situation in Venezuela was really difficult with all the social political changes that we went through. So one day I got a call from my dad, basically telling me that he had sold the herd and gave away the ranch just because production was impossible. It was very difficult for me to swallow that, but still in my mind I had that, that pressing need of going back to start a herd and contribute in whatever way I could to make Venezuela better. So we went back to Venezuela and to the same region near where we were before and started again. <clears throat> we were able to start a, another group for a ranch and live off the lands, have the kids exposed to my side of the family, the culture, the language. And we were living the dream. Until one day, one day we had uh, a band of thieves break into the ranch, put a gun to my head, and tie me down in front of the family. When I realized that all they were after were material goods, I kind of felt a little ease, knowing that, knowing that my kids and the wife were fine. 
but I also realized that it was time to, to leave the dream behind. So the next week I put the family in the plane back to Carbondale, and about 30 days later I followed. Coming back to the U.S. this time was very different for me. I had lived here as a student, as a tourist, as a resident, and as a citizen. But all the time in the past, I was a foreigner. This time I came back as an immigrant. When you live here as an immigrant, it's very different. You have to learn how to dream again. You have to reinvent yourself. And I actually, it took me about two or three years just living stuck in the past, holding on to what I had lost. And it wasn't until the year 2014, when Colorado legislation changed to lease the water buffalo from an exotic species to a domestic species, allowing me to start a water buffalo herd again. So I got a hold of my first two animals from Texas, and soon after that, with the help of my good friend Wyatt, we made a trip to Arkansas and another trip to New Jersey. And with this, I started the base of the herd, all with young animals, so I could train them with a very different type of handling. <clears throat> so at the moment, I really didn't know how I was gonna make this happen. And I established a partnership with some fire ranch. The Sewell family opened the doors for me to establish this herd here in the Roaring Fork Valley. The next challenge was uh, how to make this happen with uh, little capital. So I came up with this idea of a mobile dairy, which is basically a trailer that I follow with the herd from pasture to pasture. It doesn't have a floor, so the cows can do their business and stay straight on the ground. And um, I got a grant from CORE to put solar panels on it. CORE is a start for community, community Office for Resource Efficiency, and they do grants for energy improvement and renewable energy. So with these panels, I power the milking machine, the lights, and the radio, so we can listen to Radio Tricolor in the morning. <laughs> So this year I was able to get my first two animals born in this valley that I named uh, Juanota and Terecay after the two water buffalo ranch where I grew up at in Venezuela. When Jose shared with me that when you bond with buffaloes, uh, they accept you into the herd for life, I, I, I just wanted to call this story, He Who Runs With the Water Buffaloes. <laughs> Thank you, Jose, so much. And, and please ask Jose about what he is doing. I went up and visited the herd up at the Sewell Ranch just to watch Jose with this um, incredibly large but quite gentle animal is such an experience so catch him at the end of the night thank you Jose so much <laughs>